This microphone is on. You don't need your one. So um, today I'm going to talk about the legal foundation for uh, each county supervisor that is right there and is in 2019. And uh, today we're going to discuss uh, this paper. Um, labeling in the real world is uh, very expensive, and uh, one of the main questions when we are dealing with machine learning um, projects is that uh, do we have a secure uh, label data for it? Uh, do we secure the label data for it or not? But uh, on the other hand, uh, our label data is um, pretty uh, easy to gather, and that's a lot of time. And the motivation of this paper is that um, can we use a large amount of uh, uh, label data um, by leveraging on label data? So, um, the label data is a limited and um, can still but have it and kind of a um, knowledge about the structure of the data. And um, so if you could um, understand and uh, how the uh, structure of the data is that we can uh, develop a uh, machine learning algorithm which can create a you know, right decision boundary among the data for us. There are three main uh, solutions to uh, some separation, which are uh, they are connected in maybe together in the way we are talking and and they give a sense to provide the learning region. Um, the cluster assumption is that uh, when uh, the one data is clustered with other data points, it means that uh, totally uh, uh, they are assigned to the same cluster. But uh, in the manifold assumption, we assume that um, uh, the low dimensional data can be represented on the map. And this paper is uh, utilized uh, both of uh, these uh, concepts and uh, the manifold, and also it uses uh, the tracks of the learning. And it starts with uh, Mentioning that how semi supervised learning is um, beneficial in uh, nowadays. And then it mentions that uh, the previous uh, semi supervised learning algorithms are uh, the tracks of deep learning. With this paper, it also includes the uh, tracks of deep learning as well. Um, And their methodology is, um, is that uh, to create a nearest neighbor graph and then perform a later publication by trying to fit it and on the training set. And then they uh, estimate the weight reflected uh, into their mm -hmm. solar readings. And finally, it is uh, injects the uh, obtained table into their network. Uh, Training process. Uh, this is the algorithm that uh, the legal publication uses uh, in this paper. So, can you explain what it does? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So, uh, we start with um, and creating uh, the nearest neighbor graph. So uh, given a uh, network we we define the of data, we um, construct the uh, descriptor and uh, set of these. And then we um, create um, adjacency metrics here, and then uh, we use the conjugate gradient to solve the linear equation to estimate the view, which is going to be used for our solar label. And then we assign a, um, 
and, and then we because uh, we want to uh, uh, carry on classifying and uh, you know solar label certainty and plants plant balance we um, assign and uh, uh, the label weights with this formula and this use entropy as a measure of uncertainty. And then um, to deal with the um, issue of class uh, imbalance, uh, they use this formula, which uh, then tells uh, you the experiment they did that they used. Can you explain what they exactly did? <laughs> like, like, are you going to come back? Or are you, are you going to explain later? Mm -hmm. Last slide. Yeah, like or the previous one where this figure was larger. Yeah. This is this one. Yeah, what is going on here? Can you? This is our data set, and the you know, the triangle ones with the colors are our um, label data. And this is for one class, the one one, the blue ones for another class, and the blue ones for another. And these uh, green ones are our label data. And so it extracts the features um, um, as a, a descriptor. It eliminates the last layer and uh, it um, extracts this feature. So you train on what's available first. Right? Like on the left, you have triangles. Yes. You train only using triangles. You train some model on triangles, right? Yes. Yeah, first, we use the label data, and then we assign uh, the labels to the uh, label data, and then we train on the label and label data here, and then we give the feedback here. How do you assign the labels to unlabeled data? How do they assign? Automatic prediction. I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Are you using the model to assign the label? Yes. Mm -hmm. The model, as far as I know, is uh, for extracting uh, to for it's for extracting the descriptors from the main mm -hmm. data, and later for another. Uh, when we are initially start is we start with label data, but when in, in each iteration we use a uh, both labeled and unlabeled data. Yeah, but you don't use the model to make predictions on unlabeled data. You only use the model to make a bedding and then to find the nearest neighbor yes. neighborhood car. Yes. And then that grade which has been assigned to this really of page and what is the D in that case? It's root of D, then you have grade and then you have again a root of D. Oh, this looks like Laplace and graph Laplace and I think so the decomposition of uh, the W, it's affinity or adjacency matrix, right? A, and then when you do like this, this looks like a, a weighted or decomposition of the adjacent symmetric space. Uh, I think, I think uh, yeah, so your um, curly W or whatever it is, is your eigenvalues, uh, the, the way it's shown at least. What is 10? Solve them for label propagation. Yeah, but solve ten. Ten is equation. Do you have the equation next, maybe? Yeah, what is ten? What is the equation then? So there are three equations that this algorithm references, nine, 10, and 11. Do you have them on the next slide? 
Yeah, but maybe she has them on the next slide. Yeah, do you have 10, 11 here? Yeah, uh, 10 is I mark minus uh, I uh, So what is going? It's a few. If that is 10, then they're already doing to see which is assigned to solve 10 for label proposition, right? And if, if you go to the previous slide, uh, where they are showing it, uh, yeah, so Z is solve 10 with CG. Uh, 10 is, if 10 is like what uh, I minus alpha of Z, then are they, are they doing this some, are they doing some recursion in this case, or like how did what the initial value of seeing that? So good because like if like Z is what it it says solve ten for C G, uh, but then in the next slide, if equation ten is I minus alpha Z, then what is that Z? Alpha omega. See, yeah, Z is unknown. You yeah. need to solve for it. Oh, yeah, go to the next step. Yeah, yeah please. So somehow, why is the labels that are on the far left, uh, like where we started with, the given labels, equals Y, omega, or uh, alpha times omega, is the overall. Uh, Graph, neighborhood graph, basically. Adjacency, weighted adjacency matrix or something like that. And Z is unknown. So you're solving it for Z. Yeah, so solving it for Z. Yeah, so it's not the same. These are these are meaning the labels. These are the assigned data. Yeah, the exact and short label. Yeah. We uh, did some experiments um, in measuring the decrease follow the cosine and part of our bill is which is is real as and they need a theory and three data sets to part from the hundred and in information. And they use that uh, to pull labor standard class of order and also a uh, method for the measuring class. Their initial noise and um, learning rate is one table class. Here is uh, some pictures uh, from their from their result section. Um, when you this uh, image in on the left is um, shows uh, when you just have one label data and um, and it propagates uh, through um, the unlabeled data. This is for uh, three and this on the right and for an end label. So how can we infer green or blue on the left? Oh, one example for class. What is the size of the size of proportion to the certainty of having that with But there is a way there you were showing, right? Like in one of your slides, you were showing that you sum all the samples with some weight. Yeah, the size reflects the certainty. Yeah, but where does that certainty come from? So we know why are you not using the entire space? I am struggling to see the image. Yeah, that's the way. For an hour label data space, we encountered it. 
available for uh, our our legal system. So what is the entropy of a single sample? This entropy of Z hat, Z sub I. So it's a single sample. And which you see in the paper, it's saying that. Just trying to figure out. We're going from label one to L, and then from L plus one to L. So what are we doing with two steps? Okay. So the loss is summation of the two parts here. It's going from one, one to L. What is it? Just keeping the L's. Yeah, like they're keeping something. Index mm -hmm. L, but what is that index? Yeah, what are they? Because there is no L here. There is no L here, or like L plus L. Uh, yeah, like what are they doing it in two parts? What is? Yeah, and because in the second part they have this uh, normalization over all the samples. So I'm, I'm guessing like this: the first part is the already known samples. Oh, maybe those are known samples, and right. those, those are the rest. The known samples they don't weigh, and the rest there. So it looks like the weight here is one, right? Uh, so the weight here is one, it's like entropy is zero, right? Entropy is zero, so they put the weight one. And here they put some weight, which is less than one. <laughs> Although, can you give it more? Maybe you can check out what the variables mean here. Um, uh, you have like L of J plus U of J, the inverse of that. Um, so what is that? Well, yeah, it's the number of labeled samples plus number of unlabeled samples. But why J? Just J. Yeah, I, I also don't know. The, oh, okay. J is a part. So it's, it's oh again. Yeah. It's just dividing by the number of you know, uh, samples assigned to this class. It's just uh, sigma show complicated way to say a simple thing. Just normalizing by the number of labels. Uh, Examples of the class. Yeah, one over this. But I'm still confused because why are those different? They should be the same. They should be the same. This and this should be exactly the same thing. Why is there a hat here versus things like that? Well, I, I guess because in the second part, you don't really need Yeah, but normalization constant is the same. It doesn't, it depends, it's just the sum of labels and unlabeled assigned to this. Okay, formal notation is difficult uh, to come up with. So it's kind of a messy way to say simple things. It's very hard to parse, but all they mean is take all the samples of the same class, no matter if they're given to you or you label them automatically and count them. That will be your side uh, inverse. Yeah. But why? So, likelihood, what is L, uh, the omega or LW? Is it the loss, the likelihood, or what are they? They're like summing all of that. It's the sum of the likelihood, right? The little likelihood, the little L. What is this? Uh, the loss. Yeah, so those are the loss on, oh, so this is the loss on the sample by your new model. Okay. The multiple sample and then you're adding all the samples from the side to it or
Did you explain why they? So this is the simple uh, Yarovsky's algorithm for label propagation, but done with a more complicated way. Like they added the step instead of using the model, they did the labels. They've done the geometry, uh, add the geometry to predict the labels instead of the model. Uh, are they explaining why? Because the model will give you the uncertainty as well in the prediction. If you assign the labels by using the old one, why they did not use the old one? So why to do this? Did they cite the you know the Rockski algorithm um, label? Yes. Yeah, maybe around where they say about this algorithm. So, Okay, okay, but at least I understand what they mechanically do. That we're just missing why they're doing it. But, uh, is everyone good with? What is happening? Okay. Um, and results on the sequence. They are not cheap and good results in the anti model and the support model. And it's a long error range here. And it changes in larger when the number of labels is reduced. This is the result for a super exam and a British one. British one is a standard one. The lower the better, or what? The, what is the? So why do they say the benefit is larger when the number of samples is fewer? You said their benefit is. But how do you know that you need relative improvement from this number C and O? They say it in the paper or? But I guess the more labeled samples you have, the better and more confident you will be in your assignment and uh, learning geometry implication. Why would they be? They still should be good if they could or not. Then it should be better, not worse. That's interesting. Oh, that's what's going to be produced by us. Okay. So, what do you think about this paper? I think there is some flaws in the framework of this paper because uh, they said that the minimum is vulnerable in the behalf of the competitor, which is between the aim of the paper because the more already they come, we have the better. Well, you, did you talk about ablation study? What did they find in ablation study? They talk about the effect of the weights and etc. What was the effect of the weights? Yeah, they say it, it, the ablation study shown the table one of ablation study. 
the effect of the weight is positive when you use uncertainty weighting is uh it has a large large input that people want to have. What methods of the slavery people usually do? In a manual label? No, I know about manual slavery. <laughs> I mean, in general, if you can't uh, label all the data manually, uh, what stuff do people use? In general, the graphic and the but there are several levels of change and each can you go to the algorithm slide? I don't know if you can understand this a little bit. Notice this. What is that? 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 What is that?